not saying that it's perfect, but like you're saying, like it's a start, and mm-hmm. we just got to keep pushing it. Yeah, you know, saying, okay, that's great, we're here, but this is not what we're. Yeah, exactly. Like that. Hi, my name is Mitch, and my background is Indian. I'm Janice, and I'm Tamil Sri Lankan. Hi, I'm Shirley. I'm Tamil. Uh, hey guys, Hadia. I'm Jamaican. I'm Tamia, and I'm Asian. So the first question I wanted to ask is, have you guys ever experienced or like witnessed colorism within like your friend groups or your family or just like yourself? Um, so if we ever, if I ever experienced colorism, yes, but what's crazy is I experienced colorism when I actually came to Canada. I was very young when I was in Jamaica and I kind of grew up in a society where my color or my race wasn't really much of a topic. But when I came here, it really became a topic because that's what you get called by on the street, like you're a light-skinned girl. Or that's what they refer to you as in your friend group, you're a light-skinned girl, which was different for me. I feel like it happens to me more within my race than from other races like towards me. Similar in my culture too, Tamil. Um, I'm considered lighter uh, compared to like an average Tamil person. <laughs> Most of them are darker. So with, tying off what you guys said, it's the same idea. I feel like I, f- I experienced maybe a m- more racism in like an everyday situation, but it's colorism is really within my culture is that I'm praised for being so light compared to an average Tamil girl who's much darker than I am. And I feel like all of that is kind of stemmed from, it is derivative of racism, it is derivative of that like whole idea that being white is superior. If you are closer to being white, if you are closer to being fair, the fairer you are, the more beautiful. Yeah. So it's like they put you up on some type of pedestal just because you're like closer to being white. Yeah. I feel like as as kids, we grow up, we don't notice these things. Like, you know, yeah. like, as yeah. culture and society goes on. I remember once when I was small, I saw this, like, face wash commercial. You know, like, that's the biggest is in the makeup industry. It's like, they have a face wash. I, if you notice the skin, like, the tone, the transparency is, like, a little darker. And when they wash their face, yeah, they're like, basically <laughs> the lightest person ever. That's like consumed. every South Asian yeah. beauty yeah. ad. It's or, crazy. like, you yeah. know, like, anything. Like, you, these girls are, like, mostly these models and white. You didn't, you never noticed it. Even for guys, like, you know, you see, like, white men in suits. So, like, you know, like... Gillette male commercials, you see, mostly you see male, white men, you don't notice it, but after a while you just keep thinking like, why am, why is a person that like me not represented on the screen like that? Mm-hmm. Like you think of like, okay, why am I not there? So that's when the concept starts building, because building, you see all, you want to be part of this culture, but you don't see yourself being representative. Okay. I want to like talk back to what you were saying about it being like a beauty thing. I think growing up in a South Asian culture, it is like a narrative that is taught to you since you were like little that the lighter you are, the prettier you are. And unfortunately, like it takes you a while before you realize and you have to kind of disconnect Wait, I'm not prettier because I'm lighter, mm-hmm. you know, but mm-hmm. the, it's what they it's what they push on you. It's what they tell you. It's what your aunts and uncles are telling you. Oh, my goodness. You're so light. Yeah. Uh, wow. Or it's my mom will be that's like, like praise. Yeah, you're glorified. praised for you're yeah. glorified for yeah. being so light, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, and so even sometimes I think it's like a, it's something I've been taught to believe mm. until I disconnect it. And sometimes I go back to that and I think, oh, yeah. no, I'm going to get dark. Like, yeah. And what? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like a- my mom gets mad at me because I go in the sun without like, covering yeah. myself. Mm-hmm. It's actually much worse for girls than for guys. 100%. Like, it's yeah. more expectations in a sense. Like I'm just being a guy. Like I've had cousins who have been rejected from marriage because they're like, oh, she's too dark. Yeah. Like, yeah. She has like, she doesn't have that look in her. Like I've had like I've seen yeah. girls. But being do you put see down. do you see what I said? Like yeah. it happens and it's most evident within its own it's yeah. Yeah. within yeah. its own culture. Mm-hmm. Do you we know what I mean? It, like, it's yeah. either yeah. like that or professionally when you are comparing between two people of the same race. Do yeah. you know what I mean? To kind mm-hmm. of go off of what you said. Um, about bringing on there was like that one mixed like light skin mm-hmm. girl and then all the other girls are white But that girl was the light skin girl for that like company to be like, oh, we're not like white exclusive Yeah, we checked yeah, the, we exactly. the box. Yeah, and exactly. We, got, we're diverse. we did the bare minimum We got yeah. someone of a different race who is as close to our beauty standards. Yeah, yeah. as you yeah. can yeah. possibly get sure. So it's like we're not we're not racist. Yeah, but at the same time, you're not like 
accept, accepting of mm-hmm. the differences yeah. in beauty. You know what the I mean? The amount of different levels of I'm not racist, my friends were. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> and then it comes in levels, I'm telling you. Yeah. If we're not racist, there's a black person movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. So do you feel like dark skins, like they're the main ones right now, that like they're loved online, not like in real life. Tying into that too, like how do you feel personally when you finally feel represented? I don't think like South Asian people are represented at Definitely. all. Mm-hmm. Like it's yeah. just, it's yeah. a whole section Definitely. that's just, yeah. it's like an umbrella yeah. term of yeah. brown. If yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. Made, yeah. they made one Aladdin movie and, and then, then yeah. two yeah. brown girls in there yeah. and they're like, and we're done. Like mm-hmm. I, you never see them. So yeah. Yeah. I can't really answer that question. Because, because we're not there, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. That, that in itself is a huge answer. issue, <laughs> of course. Because what you were saying about diversity being represented in the media and how you feel like it's kind of like a trend in the sense that they're only appreciated online or they only seem to be mm-hmm. encouraged online. It's like, I feel like it's important that it starts there. Because why did it develop in the first place? It's mm-hmm. because the, the standard of beauty was always like, Caucasian, white, yeah. this is what you want to be, that's the way it's advertised, that's what's shown on screens, it's what you see in pictures, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's what's drilled into generations and generations, and it's not even on purpose. It's happening just because that's what you're constantly surrounded by. Mm-hmm. So for black people, brown people, people, Asian people, people of all different backgrounds and diversities to be represented in the media, it starts on social media because that's how you're going to reach the biggest like group of people. To start de- like getting them used to seeing all different types mm-hmm. of people represented as beautiful. Yeah. That's when it's gonna like actually d- like penetrate the same type of way that the colorism started in the first place. It's gonna penetrate on a subconscious level. Yeah. That we yeah. start seeing everyone as beautiful on the same scale as opposed to only one group of people being mm-hmm. glorified mm-hmm. on such a mass like scale. Yeah. Onto your thing too. Like if you notice where we start from, like even the smallest things like the Disney princesses, you know, like mm-hmm. when you start, you see the majority nine out of ten where like what she said, like a literally white princess is snow white like things we don't notice as kids you know like oh my god i want to look like i want to be a princess mm-hmm. like her even the whole barbie controversy of how like you know people like okay yeah you have to look like white it, it took them at least 30 to 40 years to at least introduce a concept of black barbie mm-hmm. like you know so things like that is like as things are changing we notice it more and more and we're giving it more attention and that that's the best part about what we're doing as like we know we we're talking about that so there's things are changing like you know Back to the Aladdin thing too. Like it actually makes me like sad that people have like like oh yeah why are you adding why does this person have to be black why does the new um, character have to be like um, who was one of the characters like Little Mermaid yeah like, Little Mermaid like oh, yeah. why does it have to like that shows that people still have this hidden mm-hmm. concept like yo this is how it's supposed to be mm-hmm. but when we're changing it it's like a big thing mm-hmm. yeah I want to piggyback off of actually go back to the question that Brie asked about. Um, people being accepted now in the media and I agree with what you said I never looked at it that way of that as a starting point to being mm-hmm. accepting everyone loves the idea of being accepting but yeah. I don't yeah. think it has actually registered at all because yeah, I very firmly believe that in order to completely grasp what someone is feeling you have to be able to put yourselves in their shoes and I feel like nobody does that I feel like the shoes people want to fill are, are likes on Twitter mm-hmm. so yeah. I think that there needs to be more a vocalized, you know, aspect on, or people need to listen to what the stories are on an everyday basis, not just the models that you see on the runway or the people that you see in print ads. It's like, oh, we have diversity. It's like, no, no, no. These are people in your community that you are un- so, like unconsciously ridiculing. Mm-hmm. So I think it needs to be a bigger discussion of people actually understanding how their subconscious actions are affecting the people around them. And I don't think that's just people that are lighter towards darker people. I think it's darker people towards lighter people as well because there's definitely a stigma there. Of course. Um, And I think that in terms of what Keek said about being more accepted now or how how does it feel to be um, more seen in in terms of media, um, I think it's a good thing, but I I would be lying if I said I didn't feel like it was more done out of pity. I feel like it's just what we've all been saying like okay well we have to have this here or else it's going to be a big thing so it's but it's like you're not actually appreciated for who you are you just have to be there to make sure that no one's upset to be honest though i really feel like while it's a good start i feel like it's like a big marketing ploy like Mm -hmm. rihanna was like the first to actually include all skin tones in her makeup line and every other makeup line that followed it's really great that they're finally including like all the skin tones 
but they're only doing it for business. Yeah, so they're like, not falling behind. Exactly. Yeah. It's you know? also like, why did that have to happen in what twenties? There you go. Twenty eighteen. Like, yeah. Twenty nineteen like, 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 is when black women could wear their natural hair, honey. Twenty nineteen, <laughs> just now, yesterday. It's just like that. Mm, that should like that took way too long. Yeah, <laughs> way too long. Anyways, my next question was, um, do the stereotypes from twi- the do the stereotypes behind colorism make you more self conscious or insecure? Ooh. Whether or not you're on the favorable side or unfavorable side. Yeah. yeah. Um, I used to be very self conscious about my color for sure, especially growing up in a predominantly white city. I used to think um, that I would always try to have to be lighter. So, like, I used to go to the dermatologist because I had acne, obviously, but like, I went to the dermatologist for my acne, but what they gave me was, and all the people that worked there were white, and what they gave me was something that bleached my skin, they're like, this is how it's going to fix, like, what's going on. So I was like, okay, and this is when I was younger, so I used it, and I, I mean, like, my best friends know, I became, like, a shade or two shades lighter just by using this bleaching cream, and I thought it was, like, great, I'm like, oh, okay, cool, I'm getting lighter, and my acne's getting fixed, and then as I grew up, I was like, why does that need to happen, and I think as I... Yeah grown up and just experienced more things and moved away from Canada and came back, I'm much, much more accepting of my color and who I am. And I literally go to the beauty supply store and find things that work for my skin and it's not bleaching and it's not like $300. So I think that it takes time to be comfortable with who you are. And I think that um, it's good to try and find people who are accepting of you because that makes it easier as well. But I think there's definitely always going to be um, a subconscious, self-conscious thing about my color because of the world that we live in and the people that um, we hold our beauty standards to. But as of right now... Well, I mean, like, for me, for example, like, when I was a kid, um, I don't know if it's a brown girl thing, but I was a lot darker, maybe, like, recess or whatever, and I went to a school with, like, all Filipino kids, and I was, like, the only brown-skinned girl, so I really, like, I felt it, like, I felt like I was darker. Every time, like, those kids would make those, like, oh, we're gonna turn off the light, and, like, X is gonna disappear, ha ha ha, I would just laugh along, hoping that I'm not gonna go next, you know? So you learn to really, like, and then, obviously, in our South Asian culture, like, you really grow up with, like, fair being prettier like even before a baby is born they would be like oh the mom is fair so hopefully the baby's gonna be like light skin too so then in high school I don't know what happened like I had a glow up obviously because I was not a cute kid but then also my skin got somewhat lighter in the high school I went to and then suddenly I was like I was pretty and then instead of realizing what colorism is or like I just I was still confined to it so I'm like oh you know what now I'm light in this environment so now I'm pretty and I got self-confidence that way and it took me until I was 18 and going away to university to realize what that actually was, how damaging it is to realize, you know what, like, I could be pretty because I'm pretty, like, not because I'm light, not because I'm dark or whatever it is, but it is very much instilled in girls and guys, of course, but, like, as a brown girl from when you're a young age and your environment and everything, too, like, it kind of it instills that even further. Like, you see movies, as we were talking about, with, like, white people on it, so you want to have your eccentric features to be pretty. You want the narrow nose and like the cheekbones and stuff and you want the lighter skin you know so it takes a while to actually even like get out of that too but yeah absolutely okay and then my next question was you kind of like answered that a while ago was like has your family like ever made comments to you on like who you should like bring home or who they expect you to date or what kind of background should I have? I guess yes oh this is so controversial I'll make mine really really short and I don't want to offend anybody because Percy I don't care who I bring Refers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what the person looks like. Mm-hmm. My mom also um, does not care. She's very like, if you love, then you love. And I adore her for that. My dad, I love you. But <laughs> my dad has a, a, a slightly different way of thinking about it. He's a very accepting individual, but I think that the, the preconceived notions about who a dark skin girl is supposed to be with in terms of to be appreciated to a full extent is still there. And I can't say that he's wrong because of maybe the environments he's known before I came into the picture or even just seeing it today of like, um, there are some things that maybe someone that is with you that's a different race wouldn't understand if you were this race. So look for somebody who looks like you because they'll be able to relate to you better. Mm -hmm. And I understand that aspect of where he's coming from, but I think that it's important to understand that people 
can go beyond this gaze and have this gaze and you can be accepting regardless of race. With my parents, unfortunately, yes. Like, it's, they, they do care. Usually they just say, bring home someone who's brown for the same reason that, so they understand your cultural, culture, whatever. And again, the preference is on the lighter people. But I think, like what you touched upon before, it's a lot less pressure on guys than girls mm -hmm. for some reason. So I think within culture, like it's not that serious if I brought home a darker guy, mm -hmm. if he's brown. But otherwise, they said to... But if you were a son instead of a daughter, they then would want you to bring home a light skin girl. Because she's prettier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And just like my final question, um, are you like subconscious of who you date because your parents are like, or like your culture has so that in the back of your head, like you grew up knowing through like, you know, they want like the lighter girl or lighter guy or no, are you subconscious no. of who you date? Simple answer. No. no. <laughs> if it's looks, I don't, I genuinely don't care. They know I don't care because I've told them to their face. Like if I bring yeah. home somebody looks only and I like them. I don't care what you think. Yeah. You don't have to like them. You're not dating them. Mm -hmm. So what you have to say about their appearance doesn't matter to me. Truthfully, I think if if I like that person enough, yeah. I know bringing them home would be a struggle. It'll be a fight. But if I see the worth in that person, I'm gonna bring them home anyway. There you go. You know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no. If you can't accept the person and you care about what your family thinks, then there's no point in dating in the first place. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think you have paranoia the whole your whole life yeah. what other people will think. It's kind of it's telling of how like we grew up in that cultural context too, and that we kind of came out of it. And our parents like obviously you can't teach an old dog new tricks, whatever. Like they're still in it. Yeah. But I think as long as again like if you bring home this person, you're like you know what I like them, and the personality is good like that. I think they have to they learn to overlook like the skin tone and like the race and whichever like that. Okay.